Um, I am blessed to lead a very talented and gifted praise team. Um, every Sunday, every practice is, uh, I love it because um, first we get to praise Jesus, but uh, the folks I, I lead with are just amazing. So I'm actually going to interview Kalen and Jeff. Um, so Kalen, if you come on up, I'm actually going to start with you this time, Kalen. So yeah, I know last time Jeff started and uh, so now we'll flip flop it. So what we're going to do, um, Byron today is preaching about discipline. And when he kind of shared what he was preaching about, um, I just thought it was fitting to kind of talk about the discipline it takes to become really good musicians. And uh, we could have interviewed show choir folks or athletes, but since um, I have access to these guys and kind of forced them to, uh, that's what we got today. So um, you guys are super talented, um, musically more gifted than uh, a lot of us. Um, and like I said, I love playing with you guys, but it didn't just happen overnight, right? So um, if you would share as you started learning to play drums and guitar, what did that look like? How much time did it take? Um, Byron's gonna talk about the fact that in order to get good at something, you have to say yes to that, but then say no to some other things. So tell us what um, learning these instruments looked like when you first started. Yeah, well, I think I, um, I, think I started playing drum set when I was probably uh, 10 or 11. My brother and I got a drum set and he taught me a few things. Um, and that just like kind of set me up to um, kind of experiment, experiment on my own and learn more on my own. And if you know me, you know that I don't just play the drum set. Um, so I've, I've spent many, many hours learning different instruments because I want to I wanna be a good musician. I want to be able to play multiple instruments. And um, I don't just want to be able to know how to play them. I, wanna, I don't want to be mediocre at any of them. I want to be able to play them really well. So. And I hope I do that here. So it's been, it's taken a lot of, a lot of time. I spend a lot of time um, working and just working on my craft. Uh, for me, I got my first guitar when I was 12. I took lessons for about a year. Um, and I think that was more the discipline part of it. Uh, guitar lessons weren't always pleasant. Uh, had to play a lot of the same things over and over again that didn't really have all that much meaning. Um, Pretty sure somewhere during that time my mom wanted to hit me with my guitar at some point. So I usually stayed in my room with the door closed. Um, uh, stopped taking guitar lessons and realized that I could listen to music and I could figure out the chords just from listening to it. So uh, the thing is though is I spent most of my time uh, when I wasn't outside playing with my friends in my room playing my guitar. Um, I did that a lot. All through high school, I'd get home from school every day and I'd play my guitar. Um, I probably played the most when I was in college. Uh, after my work was done, I had, seemed like I had a pretty good amount of free time um, back then. So, um, But I would play for hours, um, kind of get lost in it and not even realize how much time had passed. But um, at whatever point, I was able to start playing things that other people wanted to hear. So my mom actually invited me into the room to play. At some point. And now a lot of times I invite him to, to play things like during communion. I told him this morning or maybe last night, hey, play something for communion. And then, okay, I can do it. Um, so back to Jeff. I'm going to have him keep that. So Jeff, um, like right now you have a full-time job. You're working on your master's. Um, you have life that happens. But uh, we practice, for those of you who don't know, we practice a couple hours every week. Uh, and then we lead both services. But other than that, what does practicing and discipline look like now for you to learn the new songs or to, to hear something and, and continue that learning your, that guitar craft? What's it look like? A lot of times with the learning the new stuff, uh, I mean, most of the songs that Troy picks aren't that tough to pick up or we've done them before. Thank but you. a lot of times he'll send, <laughs> a lot of times he'll send uh, uh, links to YouTube videos and say, hey, listen to this, see what you think. Um, I think a lot of times uh, he says he troyifies things, but sometimes we'll play around with the arrangements a little bit just to make it, you know, something that's comfortable for us. But as far as playing outside of that venue, whenever I have a chance at home, I'll pick up my guitar, even if it's 10 minutes before I go to bed. A lot of times I'll just grab the guitar and play something. Um, and at home I have a, a small amplifier that has a, uh, has a looper built into it. So if you don't know what that is, I can, 
I hit a switch and then I can play something and it kind of records that and then it'll just keep playing it over and over again. And so I'll have some, a little chord progression and I'll play something over the top of it. Uh, sometimes other chords, sometimes I'll, you know, play little scales and things, uh, melodies, whatever. Um, so that's a lot of times how I practice on my own. Uh, or when the weather's nice, I'll just sit out on the porch and play. So either way. So Kaylin, Jeff kind of said, you know, when he was first learning, he gave up the, the chance to play with friends and to, you know, do some things that maybe kids would enjoy doing. And I know whenever you were in high school, you were part of the, the marching band. And for those who don't know, marching band is hours um, during the season. And, uh, you know, even during a competition day, you, you'll see them Saturday morning, they'll get up and practice for three or four hours and then go away and, and do the marching band competition. So tell me about like the marching band part and maybe some things that you had to give up in order to be one of the best marching bands in the state. Well, yeah, if you, if you played like a high school sport, you know that it takes a lot of work and discipline to be able to uh, have like a good team. And it's the same way with performing arts activities. Um, and especially ours, like we, we start in July and we go all the way to November. So we, we face everything. You face super early mornings, you face 90 degree days, you face 30 degree days. And um, just being able to get yourself up and get motivated to um, go out super early in the morning in the summer and super early in the morning on Saturdays for competitions, have long rehearsal days, long competition days. It takes a lot of um, just mental will to be motivated and to not gripe about it and to know that what you're doing is something that's gonna make you a better better person, better musician, and it's going to better the um, people around you. Well, as Jeff pointed out, a lot of times I pick songs that are easy or easier because I need that. But most of you have never been to one of our practices, so here's what happens on a normal practice. We get here and we play a song or two, and then Jeff tangents, and sometimes it's Guns N' Roses, sometimes it's Prince, um, pretty much anything from the 70s and 80s, he kind of just starts jamming and then... I let him go for about 30 seconds or a minute, and then I rein him back in. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, before Byron comes up, I'm going to let you experience that. So he's going to play something. Kaylin's going to join in. Um, but before we do that, I'm going to pray for the sermon and uh, for God to speak. God, thank you that, um, that you ask us to, to be changed, to be different. Uh, you take us how we are. Uh, you take us messed up and broken but you ask us to, through your spirit and through Jesus, to live disciplined and changed lives. So God, as Byron comes today, speak through him. Um, Holy Spirit, move in this place to help us to leave different than when we came. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Yeah, I got the fun job of interrupting that. He said, yeah, come on up, and they'll stop playing. I thought, yeah, Mr. Killjoy. <laughs> you probably didn't know that the original lyrics to that song was uh, Sweet Home Indiana. Did you guys know that? <laughs> it is in this case. <laughs> hey, thanks, guys, for sh sharing that. Um, you, uh, your stories reveal the lie behind the idea that you can't be a musician and a grown-up at the same time, so... <laughs> so, appreciate that. So, we're talking about uh, a fun topic, sarcasm there. Uh, one of those things that uh, when we think about, nobody says, oh yeah, that sounds like a, a good thing to explore. In fact, every Saturday, uh, I, I don't know, if you follow us on Facebook, uh, you know, we post a little, usually the, the sermon title of the week, and just a little blurb about it, and I really thought about changing the title because the idea of develop discipline 
doesn't sound like, yeah, I want to get out of bed and go to that one. Maybe something like how to get rich in five easy, easy steps. That'll get you out. But discipline is a key part of our lives and of achieving and succeeding and blessing other people. Because these things don't happen by accident. They happen because we learn how to, and we're going to say this over and over, we learn how to say no to some things so we can say yes to the right things, the good things, the things that bless us. We're going to take a look at Proverbs 13. Verse 18 says this, He who ignores discipline comes to poverty and shame. Now, if, if you're like me, I was the most undisciplined person you would have met as a younger person. It just wasn't. If I'd see a book on discipline, I'd, you know, throw it away. I, I didn't like the idea. I couldn't see myself as somebody who was disciplined. I was impulsive. Um, I was disorganized. And, and then last week, I changed all that. So, <laughs> it, discipline, for some of you in this room, it, is maybe a dirty word. Now, some of you, you just, you, you just get it. You're, you get up, you tackle the day, you do the right things at the right time and all that. We have a name for you. We call you weirdos. But, but many of you here, you, you find yourself just, you can't seem to do the right things in the right time and some of the things that you want to do. Now, I have found, like we've talked about in several of these messages, that there are areas in our, of our lives that we are very well disciplined around. We, we get that down. You, when it comes to work, you, you're a rising shiner. You go and you tackle the day. You get there early. You do your job. You don't gripe. You don't complain. You check out. You go home and you leave it all behind. And suddenly, you come home. You just sort of emotionally, mentally, spiritually collapse. And so maybe you're great at work, but home life, there's not a lot of discipline at. But maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it's your marriage. There might be some area of your life that could use some development of discipline. And so keep that in mind as we work our way through this because what this verse is really telling us is that when we discipline ourselves, when we learn the joy of discipline, we get the good stuff for our lives. I'm not talking about, you know, fancy cars and big houses and stuff. Just the stuff of life, the abundant life, the joy and the peace. That stuff comes to us when we learn. So let's explore that. As we've heard here, discipline makes all the difference. If you want to be a good musician, you learn how to say no to something so you can say yes to practice time. Learning scales and chords... Just endlessly, over and over. I, there was a time, a season where I learned how to play guitar. Uh, nothing at the level like you're at, you know, but just trying to learn a few chords. And you just literally have to spend hours and hours just doing it. And you talked to the first service, Jeff, about getting those calluses on your fingers. And it takes that. And, and any person who achieves a certain level of success or competence in an area is someone who disciplined themselves to get there. If you're a craftsman, you learn how to be patient, you learn how to measure, learn how to use your tools in a right way. If you're an athlete, there are a lot of times spent running, batty practice, free throws, A lot of those things that aren't fun, nobody's cheering you on. You have to maybe do it by yourself or just a few other people, but over and over and over again so you can get competent and excel to the level that you want to excel at. For the pilot, it's their safety net. Don't you, when you get on an airplane, don't you want to know that you have a pilot who paid attention in pilot school? that doesn't show up inebriated or on some substance they shouldn't be on, that they're they're ready to fly, to do their job. 
but knows how the airplane works, knows how to land the airplane. That's an important part. Or you go to the doctor. You want to go to a doctor or a surgeon that really knew their stuff, that wasn't off partying every weekend, that, that, that when you talk to them about your symptoms, they've learned, they've discovered, they understand what it takes or what, what you might be talking about so they can help you and get through it. And, and that's just some areas, but there are all sorts of other areas of our life. Anything that we do, we have to learn to say no to something so we can say yes to others. There's a great proverb that says this, a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. When I talk with people about setting a goal or accomplishing something, the, the great temptation to say is, well, what do you want to be true in your life at the end of your life? Or what do you want to be true in 30 years? Now, we, we all, it'd be nice to have some, some good things at that point. I'll be able to look back on a well-lived life. But oftentimes, 25, 30, 40 years seems so far away, it's hard to figure out a path to that point. So I start with this question. And I'll ask you this morning to think about this. What would you like to be true in five years? What would you like to be true about you? Maybe about your job. Maybe about your marriage. Your education. Your sport. Your, your music. What would you like to be true about that? And then what will it take to get you from where you are now to that point? It may mean you're going to have to say yes to some things that will help you along that way. It may be yes to studying. Yes to some, some walks and some challenging conversations in your marriage. But saying yes to some things may mean saying no to others. But I want to encourage you, I want to challenge you with this idea because there's something about when we achieve that goal, when we get to that place, that feels solid, that feels joyful, feels peaceful. So as you think about that, as you make that plan, let me encourage you, don't be afraid to aim high. Don't be afraid to say, you know what? I want to be the best employee my employer has. Or I want to be the best employer my employees have. I want to be the de best doctor my patients ever see. I want to be the best musician these folks have heard. I want to be the best spouse my spouse, no, my, my spouse has. I, I want to be, wait, wait, that's not right either. I want to be the best spouse I can be. You figure it out. Okay, but... I want to be the best at that. Maybe not, that doesn't mean better than everyone else, but the best that I can be in that moment. I want to bring my best. So don't be afraid to aim high. But in aiming high, it means we have to discipline ourselves if we want to achieve it. And here's the truth, and, and Ken helped us see this. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, Hebrews 12 says, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. It's hard. You know, if you're, if you're a runner, it's not fun to run miles and miles and miles and miles. But when it comes to the race, you're ready for it. Hours spent in a batting cage. But when the big game comes, you're ready for it. When the boss says, can you take care of that job? Can you do this new job? Can you take on this promotion? Doing the right things, building that up for your credibility? Yeah, I'm ready for it. Discipline helps us get to where we want to be. But in order to do that... <coughs> Excuse me. 
We need to be willing to delay gratification. We need to learn how to put things off for a while. We are a culture, a generation of of people in America. We want it now. When do you want your burger? Now. When do you want to feel better? Now. We want it all now. But if we're going to have the truly good stuff, we've got to learn to delay some gratification. We've got to learn how to put some things off. If we want to have solid marriages in the future, we can't say yes to every single relationship that comes our way and to every possibility within that relationship. I think you know what I'm saying here. Otherwise, we're going to carry a lot of regrets into those relationships. We have to be willing to put some things behind and off to the side. I want you to listen to this passage here. Proverbs 5, 7 and 8 says this, Now then, my sons, listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep to a path far from her. Do not go near the door of her house. Now, who's he talking about? What's he talking about? He's talking about going toward an adulteress or going toward a prostitute's house. Now, that's the immediate context here. But what is here is a a principle for us. And that is that we have to learn how to practice advanced decision-making. We have to learn how to plan ahead. Well, why? Well, listen to what he says. He goes on and says, Lest you give your best strength to others and your years to one who is cruel, lest strangers feast on your wealth and your toil enrich another man's house. At the end of your life, you will groan when your flesh and body are spent. You will say, How I hated discipline, how my heart spurned correction. What he's saying is, if you go and you have this relationship, And he's talking here specifically about a sexual relationship with this person. You're going to pay a price, a high price. Now, imagine this. It's it's a father talking to a son. And he kind of puts his arm around him and he has this to say. And what he's essentially saying is, you need to make your decision now while your thinking is clear and your mind is in control of your body. Not when you are in the middle of the temptation, And all the hormones are racing, and your mind is going a thousand places at once, or to just one place. You need to plan ahead for that moment. And here's some of the things he wants him to think about. He needs to, you need to consider the consequence of your actions. You need to look at the benefits of purity and the high cost of sexual sin. You need to consider the value of a clean conscience before God. You need to consider the value of maintaining your integrity before your friends, before your family, before your church. You need to consider the value of not having to worry about sexually transmitted diseases and unwanted pregnancies. It says, consider your future wife. And if the son is married, consider his marriage. And there are a number of proverbs that go into this area. Basically what he's saying is choose now not to go near that path that will take you to the temptation. Know where the temptation is deepest and strongest and stay away from there. Stay away from the moments that can lead to an impulsive but bad decision. A number of years ago a friend I had a brother who was wrestling with alcoholism, and he said his brother learned these things that we need to halt, and that is we need to be aware of these things. We need to avoid being hungry you know, for his dependency. Don't let yourself get hungry. Don't let yourself get angry. Don't let yourself get lonely, tired. But if you're experiencing any of those things, you're more likely to give in to the temptation. So be aware of those. And if you feel yourself feeling those, deal with those specifically in a healthy way. If you wait until you're in the middle of a situation of temptation, you're going to be toast. It's far better to recognize where it's at. If you want to lose weight, let's say that's a plan for you. The last thing you want to do is keep going to a buffet, right? Because you've got to get your money's worth.
pornography is an issue for you, men and women, you know where the dangers are online. You may just need to get rid of your computer. You know in your own life where you're susceptible. And for all of us here, there are different temptations that we wrestle with. And you may be very strong in some area that, that is not in tempting to you in another way. But there's another area. You know what it is. And you need to plan ahead now to say, I'm not going down that path. I'm not going near her health, whoever her is, or his way. I'm not going down there to that place, to that house. Because that's where the danger is. That's where the temptation is. Look what he says here. Do not lust in your heart after her beauty or let her captivate you with her eyes. For the prostitute reduces you to a loaf of bread and the adulteress preys upon your very life. Now, get what he's saying. To her, you're, you're just a meal ticket. So don't sit there and say, oh, look at the way she's looking at me. She must really love me. No, she just needs some money. That's all. Now, don't get stuck on just the prostitute issue here or the adultery issue or whatever it might be. And, and this is not just for men. It applies to women, too. These principles apply to all sorts of situations. Spending in debt. If you want to save money and get out of debt, don't spend a lot of time in the mall. Don't own a credit card. Reduce the opportunities for temptation. When it comes to dating and marriage, if you want to marry somebody who shares your values and your interests, that you can build a life together, you're going to have to say no to some dating opportunities that you already know are not going to lead you down that path. So you can say yes to the right relationship when it comes. Deciding ahead of time what we will do will help us avoid the painful consequences of our wrong decisions. The Bible says if you play with fire, you will get burnt. Look at Proverbs 6. Can a man scoop fire into his lap without his clothes being burned? Now, my first question is, who does that? That they have to be warned at. But the principle is clear is no, if you, if you put some fire on your clothes, you're going to catch fire. Can a man walk on hot coals without his feet being scorched? If you want to get burnt, play with fire. It's that simple. Advanced planning can also help us with our careers and our educational goals and even our spiritual goals that, that we plan into our week that we're going to be here or if we're out of town we're going to be somewhere as often as we can we're going to worship we're going to be a part of a small group we're going to build into our day time for Bible reading and prayer thinking about the scriptures and talking to God and talking with other believers about all what all that means and how we apply it to our lives. We've got to decide ahead of time to build that in. Because if we just simply wait for it to happen by accident, accidents will happen, but the wrong kind. Hebrews 10.25 says, Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. I know that, you know, sometimes you come in, you sit down, you sing some songs, you hear the message, you take communion, you give them the offering, and you walk out, and you would think, well, that was all right. It was okay. I didn't hear God speak to me directly today through any of the scriptures or songs, but it was all right. Well, because it was just all right, I don't know if I need to come next week or the week after that. I'll just show up when I feel like it. But here's what I found happened. When I put myself in a situation, time and time again, in a consistent pattern, the true pattern begins to reveal itself to me. I begin to hear what God wants me to hear. I begin to see the things in his word that he wants me to see. 
It's the consistency of the behavior that prepares us for the special moment. And you never know, on any given Sunday, the scripture verses that we study, a song that we sing, communion meditation, something speaks right into the situation that you're dealing with. I had someone this morning tell me that. He said, what you had to say today is exactly what I needed to hear. And I said, that's interesting because I actually wrote this sermon over 10 years ago. This is the third time I've preached it. I didn't arrange any of that. If there was something you needed to hear, God set the appointment. But if you had stayed home, you wouldn't have heard it. So let's be here. Be together. Prepare yourself. Get yourself into the moments where God is working. If you want to, there's an odd sport in the world. It happens on the coasts. Guys and gals take long boards out into the waves and stand on them and ride the waves in. They call it surfing. Okay? But here's the interesting thing about surfing. If you want to surf a wave, you want to ride a wave, you've got to put yourself where the wave is at at a specific point. You can't be too far out. You can't be too close. you got to be able to be there in that moment so you can ride the wave. Put yourself in those moments where you can ride God's wave, His movements. But it's not all just hard work and stuff. We can enjoy celebrations and some many, many celebrations. Scripture says, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. And in another place, all the days of the oppressed are wretched, but the cheerful heart has a continual feast. Jesus modeled a well-ordered life that included mountain walks, seaside campfires, boat trips, wedding celebrations, slow-paced dinner parties, and overnight visits with friends. Did you know, I, I found this out, I was doing some studying for this sermon this week, and did you know that Jesus liked tea parties? Did you know that? Big fan of them, apparently. Because I was reading this in Matthew 7, 28. And when Jesus finished teaching these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his tea. Oh, I'm sorry, his teachings, never mind. Um, yeah, still I think he'd like tea. And on that note, ladies, if you have not yet signed up for the You, Me, and Tea event, sponsored by the Rural Women's Ministry on Saturday, May 12th, today would be a great day. Because I think Jesus would like tea, and I think you'd like tea with Jesus. And so go have some tea together, because whenever we gather in his name, what happens? He's there. I know that's a stretch, but I was asked to make an announcement, and there we go. Seriously, ladies, they need you to sign up. If you're going, May 12th, you need to sign up today so they, they can plan. All right, let's move on. Here's the thing, we can go to one extreme or the other. We can go all business and no joy, or we can go all play and no work. But a well-disciplined life allows for those joyous times. And they can be enjoyed more because they have, you have handled the important details of life. When I was in high school, our semester ended after our two-week Christmas break. Now, you know what that means somebody's going to assign a paper that you get to write over Christmas break and worry about, because, you know, you're not going to write it until after New Year's Day anyway. But it's there in the back of your mind. But there are some of them who've got to college, and they, they wisely ended the semester before Christmas break. So you were done. You got all that out of the way, and you could relax, and you could rest. And there is something about having, getting the work done... So, doing the right things so you can really relax and enjoy the moment. 
Jesus said, if you build your life on his words, it's like you're going to build a house on rock, and it's going to be able to stand to the storms. If a storm is brewing, you know, one of those big, you, you see it coming, 60 mile an hour winds and lots of lightning, and somebody says, hey, let's all go get into that shed Byron built. Are you going to be nervous? Are you going to be anxious? Probably. But if someone said, hey, let's go into this well-built, solid, constructed home in here. In fact, let's go down into the basement and let's, we'll just play some cards until the thing goes by. Are you going to be able to rest in that moment? Probably. You see, what a disciplined life does is allow you to build a solid place where you can withstand the storms of life. It's like getting your homework done on Friday. You, ever do that? you get your homework done on Friday. Your mom and dad ever tell that? I told my kids that. Get your homework done on Friday. Enjoy the weekend. Of course, growing up, when did I do my homework? Monday morning. <laughs> I lived in Southern California, and I was praying for snow days. <laughs> so I didn't have my work done. But here's what happens. Proverbs 19 says this. The fear of the Lord leads to life. Then one rests content, untouched by trouble. If you do the right things now, if you place yourself in the center of his will, if you explore and understand what his will is, and then you live according to that will, if you obey his word, you can rest, knowing that even as a storm rages around you, you're okay, because you are in the center of his will. Let me ask you a question are you faced with a question in your life, some choice, some decision you need to make about which way you should go? The scripture is saying, if you choose his will, you can find peace. You can find peace in the moment. Now, you might not like his will at that moment. You might be kind of angry and agitated because you don't like what his word is saying. But in the end, your life will be protected by his word. He will see you through it. So have you, have you settled the question of Jesus' rule over your life? Is he your king? Have you chosen to follow him? If you take a look, closer look at Jesus' life to see if he is worthy of following, I think you'll see that he is indeed. Worthy of following, worthy of trusting, of placing yourself in the center of his will, of building your life upon his words. It's not easy. It takes discipline. It takes saying no to some things so you can say yes to the right things so you can have the life that is truly life, the life that is filled with hope and joy and peace and patience and goodness self-control, the fruit of the Spirit can become evident in your life. We're going to sing a song here in just a moment that says this about Jesus, that he is worthy of all praise we could ever breathe, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. He is worthy of following. He is worthy of being at the center of your life. He has stepped towards you. He has revealed himself to you through his word by becoming flesh. Now he invites you to step toward him and to trust in him. Let me pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning and a chance to just dig in here. And to take a look and see what you have for us. Lord, the, the, the very thought of discipline just makes me cringe sometimes because I know how undisciplined I can be in moments. I can look back over my decades of my life and see the moments that I chose my own will over your ways. I chose my impulse over your wisdom. And I paid a price. 
And I've also seen that when I trust you, when I put my hope in you, when I follow you, I find the peace and the contentment that you want me to have. I can achieve the goals that I sense you're leading me to. So help us, Father, here this morning, prepare our hearts to let you lead us, to let you guide us, to let you move us to the life that is truly life. We pray this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for taking time out of your day to watch this week's message. I hope it really encouraged you in your own walk with God. If you heard anything in the message and you'd, you'd like to speak with someone or if you'd simply like to connect with someone on staff, we'd be really excited to hear from you. Please feel free to contact us at the email address or phone number below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.